This is part 51 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss nested states and views. One of the benefit of using UI router over ng route is that it provides support for nested states and views. Nested states have parent-child relationship. This means the parent state properties are available for use in all the child states. There are several methods for creating nested states. On this slide, we see two of the common methods. One way to create nested states is by using dot notation. In this example, we have a state and the name of the state is student parent. And we have another state here. And the name of this state is students. And notice to the name of this state, we have prepended its parent state name using dot notation. So in this example, student parent is the parent state and students is the child state. Another way to nest states is by using the parent property with the parent name as string. So in this example, notice we're using parent property and the value for this parent property is the name of its parent. So again, in this case, student parent is the parent state and students is the child state. Let's understand these nested states and views with an example. So here is what we want to do. We have our students page and student details page. Students page lists all the student names which are hyperlinks. And then when we click on a student name, student details page is going to display that specific student details. So what is common between these two pages? The common part is that both the pages are displaying student totals at the top. Total male students, total female students, and grand total. So we want the parent state to be responsible for displaying the student totals, and the child states will be responsible for displaying the respective child views content, in this case, list of students, and in student details case, uh, student specific details. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step to achieve this is to create a C sharp class which is going to act as a container for these totals. So that's our first step. So we have totals property, males and females property within student totals class. So let's go ahead and create this class. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So I'm going to right click on the project and add a class. I'm going to name it student totals. In the interest of time, I have already typed the required code. So I'm going to copy that and paste it within our student totals class. So we have three properties here, total, males, and females. That's our first step. The second step is to create a web service method, which is going to retrieve student totals from our database table. So let's add this web service method in the interest of time. I have already typed the required code. So I'm going to copy this from our notepad and paste it in our web service. So let's open our student service. And within this, I'm going to paste that web method which we have just copied. And let's go over this. The name of this method is get student totals. And if we look at what we are doing here, we are creating an instance of the class that we have just created, that is student totals, which has got three properties, totals, males, and females. And then we are reading the connection string from web.config file, and then we are creating a SQL connection object using that connection string, and then we are building our SQL command object. And here is that SQL command object. Let's see what is the SQL query going to return. So I have that same SQL query here. When we execute this, we get two columns, gender and total. Within gender column, we have female, male, and grand total. And within total column, we have the respective totals, the female total, male total, and the grand total. So these are the three rows that we are getting when we execute this query. So we have that SQL query right there. So we are building our SQL command object. We are opening the connection. We are executing the command. And then we are looping through the three rows that are returned. And then we are using switch case here. So we are switching on the gender column. And if you look at gender column, we are going to have these three uh, values, female, male, or total. So we are switching on gender column. If it's male, then we are populating the male's property of the totals object. Okay, so reading the value 
uh, from total column converting it to integer and storing in the that male's property. If it's female, then female's property. And if it's default, if it's not male or female, it's going to be total. In that case, populate the total property. OK, so we populate all the three properties of that student total object. And then we are using JavaScript serializer class and serializing whatever we have in that student total object. So let's quickly test our web service. So. I'm going to run the project. So we should see our new web service method, which is get student totals. So let's quickly test that to make sure we're getting the totals information from the web service. So get student totals, let's invoke this. And what should we get back is grand total, 10 males, 5 females, 5. All right, so our web service is working as expected. That's our second step. The third step is to create our student parent state. So this is going to be the parent for both students and student detail states that we already have. So let's create the student parent state. Now, the name of the state is student parent. And look at what we have in the state configuration object. We have a URL. We have its own controller and template using controller as syntax. We have not created this controller and template yet. We'll be doing that in just a bit. And then we also have a resolve property here. So this resolve property is issuing an HTTP call to the web service method that we have just created, which is get student totals. That's going to return us the totals data. And then we are storing that in this resolve property, student totals. So this will be available both you know to the controller function here that is student parent controller as well as to all the child controller functions okay we'll prove that in just a bit okay so this resolve property student totals is going to contain the totals information and another important thing that we are doing here is making this state abstract by setting this abstract property to true so what's an abstract state an abstract state is similar to an abstract class in C Sharp. Can we create an ab uh, instance of an abstract class? We can't. In a similar fashion, the abstract state cannot be activated by itself. Now, if you look at abstract class in C Sharp, an instance of the abstract class is automatically created when an instance of child class is created. Similarly, when a child state is activated, uh, the abstract state is implicitly activated. So we can think of it being similar to abstract classes in C Sharp. So that's what is an abstract state. An abstract state cannot get activated by itself. It's implicitly activated when a child state is activated. And the benefit of using abstract state is that the URL of the parent state is prepended to the URL of all the child states. That means we can remove any redundant part from the child state URLs. If that doesn't make sense at the moment, don't worry. We'll look at that in just a bit. And another benefit of these parent state is that you know, whatever data that we have exposed using resolve property, that data will be available for all the child states as well. Similarly, if you have exposed any custom data using data property, then that custom data again will be available in all the child states. So let's create this parent state now. In the interest of time, I've already typed that code. So let's copy that from the notepad and paste that within our config function in script.js. So in our script.js, we already have student state and student details states. So just above student state, I'm going to include our parent state. The name of the state is student parent. So we have all the properties here that we have seen on the slide. Now the next step is to make students and student details states chails of the parent state that we have just created. So the way we do that is by, you know, there are several ways of nesting states. So I'm going to use the dot notation. So I'm going to copy the parent state name, which is student parent, and then specify that as the parent to the student state by using dot notation. Let's do the same with student details. So now student details and students both are child states. Now we already have URL 
within the abstract parent state slash students. That's the URL here for the parent. And look at the URL for student state. It's the same. Okay. Now the URL of the parent will be prepended to the URL of the child state. So there is no point in having the same thing here. So we can remove the redundant part and I'm just going to leave a forward slash there. And same idea with student details. I'm going to remove the redundant part and leave just forward slash colon ID. So those are the modifications required for the child states. That's our next step. Now we need to create student parent controller function. So if you look at our parent state here, we have its own controller and we have its own template. We have not created them. Let's create them now. Let's first create student parent controller. And if you look at what this parent controller function is doing, it's straightforward. We're injecting student totals into this controller function. Now, if you're wondering what is the student totals, it's nothing but the resolved dependency. So if you look at our parent state, we are using a resolved property and the name of the result property is student totals, which is going to contain our student totals. So this can be injected into its own controller function. So that's what we are injecting right here, student totals. And the student totals is going to have males, females, and totals. You know, we have seen that here, total males and females. We are retrieving whatever values we have in there and then populating the view model using this keyword there, males, females, totals. And then we'll use these properties to display that data in the view. So first, let's create our student parent controller function. So let's copy what we have in the notepad and paste it in our script.js. So let's scroll down. And I'm going to include our student's parent controller right here. Let's format this a bit. So we have our student parent controller. The next step is to create our student parent template. So notice whatever data we have, um, you know, we are displaying that in the template, in the student parent template. And another important thing is in the student parent template, we have UI dash view. So if you recollect in our index.html, we have UI dash view directive. So into this directive, all the partial templates will be injected. But then again now, in the parent template, we have another UI view directive. So this parent template will inject its content into UI view of index.html. And then into this UI view, all the child states will inject their content. So in this case, students and student details will be injecting their content into this UI view directive. And this template, you know, whatever we have here in this parent template, this will be injected into index.html, which is our layout view. So we have three levels of view here. So we have index.html, we have the student parent, and we have the child states child views, that is students.html and studentdetails.html. So now let's go ahead and create our studentparent.html. So if you look at our parent state within our script.js file, the parent state, the name that we are using for the parent template is studentparent.html. So let's add this HTML file to our templates folder. So add a new HTML page and the name of this is going to be student parent. And whatever code that we have seen on this slide, I'm going to copy that and include that within our student parent HTML. And we are also going to include UI dash view directive. All right, now we have to modify the links. So in students, uh, in index.html, we have link to students. So we have to modify that. Let's go to index.html. So here we are using UISREF. And the name of the state now, it's a child state. So in its name, we also need to include its parent's name. And if you look at what its parent name is, its parent name is student parent. So I'm going to copy that. 
and paste it right here. So the name of the student's state now is student parent dot students. So we have its parent name as well prepended. All right. Now we also have links in other pages. So let's modify them as well. We have in links in students dot html and student details dot html. Let's modify those links as well. So let's open students dot html. Again, we have UISref here. So for student details, it's going to be student parent dot student details and we have student details and again for students it's going to be student parent dot students all right so we have changed all the links those are all the things required so I'm going to build our solution and let's navigate to the root of our application so let's close all the windows let's navigate to our index.html so we are on the home page. Let's click on students. Now notice on the students page, we see student totals and we have our student names. So when I click on student name, notice we go to student details and we still see the student totals. So here we are using nested states and views. Now we said that the parent state resolved dependencies are available to all the child states. To prove this, this is what we want to do. We want to display the total number of students on the students page against this list of students text. Okay, that means the data, whatever the parent state has made available, you know, it has to be available for the child state as well. Okay, let's prove that. Now to do that, what we are going to do is inject student totals into student's controller function. This is the child state controller function, right? So the student totals, this is the resolve property made available by the parent state. Now we are injecting that into the child controller function as well. And then we are assigning that to a property on the view model. And then in students.html, we are retrieving it from the view model and displaying that there. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to our students controller function. First of all, notice our parent state right here, the resolve property. This is available in the parent state and the name of it is student totals. I'm going to inject this into the child controller function. So the child controller function here is students controller. So I'm going to inject that into this. Okay, student totals, and then we have the view model object. So on the view model, I'm going to include a property. I'm going to call it student totals as well and assign it to that property. And then all that is left is within our students.html. So where are we displaying list of students text? So here we have against H1 list of students. So here we want to display the total students in brackets. So what I'm going to do is include a bracket there and a bracket here. And then here we're using controller as syntax, so students controller dot. And what is the name of the property? Let's go to our script.js. So the name of the property is student totals. And in that we have the name of the property. There is total. So let's include that there. All right. So those are all the changes required. Let's save them and I am going to reload this. Now next to list of students, notice that we see the total number of students as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.